Yeah. There'll be four eggs in the pan. It was like, oh, like that four bits is not I don't remember. <laughs> Okay, six point one. Let's do this. Let's do this. That's what she said. <coughs> okay, so how do we define the Laplace transform of a function f of t? Did this last time. Zero to infinity. Yeah, but for our purposes. Um, of f of x uh, times e to the f t negative. Okay, right. And remember, this is a function of s. Okay, so we sort of derived that last time. Let's actually see this in action. Let's actually do a few examples. Example. Find the Laplace transform. I'm sorry. It's not my fault. I gotta got tell you, wait, wait, wait in Chinese products, they're still bad. Find the Laplace transform of a constant, and I'm also going to want you to find the Laplace transform of something like e to the a t, where a is a constant. We know that we're taking a little bit more, we're going to infinity, but okay, so then what? <laughs> then what? How do you integrate this? K is a constant, comes out. Yeah, okay, we can take out the K. Um, what's the integral of e to the minus t? Yeah, what's the integral of e to the minus st? Negative 1 over s. E to the minus t. E to the minus t. To zero and a. So they see have the limit as a approaches infinity of uh, you plug in a to so e to the minus s a minus which becomes plus plug in zero. Thank you. Right? Now Remember, we, as we defined it, our s is a positive number, right? So this is a positive number times a positive number. And this a is going to infinity, so the power is going to negative infinity. So what happens to this part? This goes to 0, which means the Laplace transform of a constant is just a constant divided by s. Could you explain? I'm sorry, I didn't pay them. How did you get the k over s? Like limit Well, the k is just a constant, so I just leave it alone. The antiderivative of this with respect to t, t is a variable, s is a constant yeah. with respect to t. So it's just 1 over minus 1 over s yeah. times this, and then I multiply by the k. No, I'm talking about the second part, actually, plus the k over s. Oh, fundamental theorem of calculus. I plug in the a, uh -oh. then minus, then I plug in 0 for t. Oh. So e to the 0 is 1, so I just have the minus k over s, but I subtracted the minus, so it becomes a plus. And so now k over s. So the Laplace transform of a constant is just a constant divided by s. Cool. 
What about the Laplace transform of an exponential? What does that look like? Let's figure it out. Just plug in e to the 18 now. From 0 from 0 to infinity, e to the 18 times e to the minus st dt. So this is 0 to infinity. I can write this as something like e to the minus What's the antiderivative of that? We well, don't have a shot at once, but someone can say something. One over s minus a. Minus one over s minus a. Like, e to the minus s minus a. Left. T so between like, zero and infinity. Yeah, tell you we're supposed to write a limit, blah, blah, blah. OK, but we're big kids now, because we know that's happening in the background. So you're going to plug in infinity, and what do you get? You get 0 plus 1 over s minus a, provided that s is greater than a. If s is bigger than a, then this actually goes to infinity. It would diverge. So this is 1 over s minus a. So one thing I want you to notice is that if, well, actually just mention it here. Just a quick thing to notice mm -hmm. is if note the Laplace transform of the function one would be what? Well, it's a constant. What is a constant? So it's a DKS. Uh, <laughs> so one over s. One over s. Now, if you look at the Laplace transform of e to the a t, what do you notice happening? 1, one over, over s minus 1. 1 over s minus a. In the Laplace transform, multiplying by an exponential is equivalent to shifting to the right. right? That's something that's important. Right? It's one of those things where actually doing this operation can change things. Mul exponential multiplication now becomes just a shift. Right? So and you'll find like derivatives now just becomes products. You can essentially turn differential equations into algebraic equations with this technique. That's what I'm trying to show you. It's, it's a very powerful technique. Um, let's do the last example. What if there was t squared? So I want to find the Laplace transform of t squared. Zero to infinity of t squared e to the minus st dt. And how do we do that? Right, by parts. You can do by parts twice, or you can do tabular integration. Keep differentiating this guy, 2t, two, uh, 2, 0. Keep integrating this guy. If you integrate this, what do you get? Minus 1 over s e to the minus s t. Integrate again. 1 over s. You get plus 1 plus over s right. squared e to the minus s t. Integrate again. You get minus 1 over s cubed e to the minus s t. This is a plus, this is a minus, this is a plus. And then you multiply across here. So that guy is going to give you a minus t squared over s e to the minus s t. Multiply across here. This would give you a minus 2t <coughs> over s squared e to the minus s t. Multiply across here. You get a minus. Plus. Well, so my, the negative is here. So uh -huh. I apply the plus sign to a negative. So it becomes negative 2 over s cubed e to the minus st. That goes to 0 and infinity. Now, how would we find this? As If I plug in t goes to infinity, what's this limit? Infinity. Nope. Uh, it's 0. How do you know it's 0? The exponential is going to the bottom. It grows a lot faster than a polynomial. You can use L'Hopital's rule, for example, twice, and you'll see that it goes to zero. Same thing here. This will go to zero, right? If you have an exponential competing with a polynomial, the exponential wins, right? So this guy's going to zero. That guy's going to infinity. He's going to kill that guy, right? So this is going to go to zero. This is going to go to zero. And this is obviously going to go to zero. 
when I was zero calculus. So minus, now I plug in zero for t, that's zero, that's zero. And here I would get minus two over s cubed. So this is actually just two over s cubed. So this is the Laplace transform of t squared. Of the blinds. And this is actually something you'll need to know. They should, on the final, they just might ask you. I don't know. They just might ask you. Here's a random function. Find the Laplace transform of this function. It means it's on it. You're okay, bro. It means it's on it. Yeah. What? I never said it was on the final. You know, like, he has liabilities, so he just has to say it might be on it. So it can't be used against him in the law of court. Okay. So now Vincent is down to a B minus. <laughs> for what he's saying in class. Okay, so, um, so basically this is how you can find the Laplace transform of a function. You plug it into this formula and it spits out a function of s and that is determined to be the Laplace transform of this function. Now they've gone through in your textbook and they just did the Laplace transform of a whole bunch of functions, right? And they have this in the table. I'm just gonna, we can derive some useful Transforms. And usually on a, on a final, they'll tell you these, right? So like in an exam, I'll also tell you them, right? So they're saying, if this is your function, this is what its Laplace transform would look like. So they just, they went through these calculations and they derived it for a bunch of things. So if you have a function one, they say it's one over s. If you have a constant, k over s, if you have an exponential, where is that? It's 1 over s minus a. What are some other ones? Well, they tell you t to the n in general, where n is greater than 0 and n is an integer. Right? So polynomials, powers, the answer is actually n factorial over s to the n plus 1. Of course, s greater than 0. S greater than A, S greater than zero, S greater than zero. Okay. And you'll notice here, if you apply N equals two, then this should give you two factorial over S to the two plus one, which is X cubed, which is what we had last time, right? Two over S cubed. So this actually works in general. You can do it for T to the N, where N is a constant, and you work it out. You'll have to, of course, do integration by parts N times. That's why you get N factorial, and so on. So the so other ones that they like to tell you, sine of at and cosine of at, right? You plug these into that formula, you'll have to do a revolving integration by parts and back substituting, and you'll end up finding that sine of at is a, a over s squared plus b. Zero cosine is s over s squared plus a squared. S greater than zero. <laughs> Let's see what's paying attention. E to the at sine of bt. What do you think that's going to give you? Give me a table similar to this one. Maybe with less results. 
Like, they wouldn't give you this and that, right? Because this one covers that, so on and so forth. They probably won't tell you these, but they'll tell you these. You can figure it out. What do you think this is going to give you? It's going to give you 1 over S squared plus A squared plus 1. Because that was multiplying what? by the uh, by exponential shifting it. Shifting it, right. So you're shifting the variable. Who's the variable? S. Are you going to shift the S? You're going to basically go here and shift the S. So this time the constant is B. So instead of A, we have B. Right? But now instead of S squared, we will have S minus A squared. Multiplying it by an exponential just shifts your variable. Same thing here. We're going to have S minus A over S minus A squared plus A squared. And there are B's instead of A's, right? Because, yeah, the angle now is but replaced by But the A's are in the E to the AT. Yeah. I'm shifting by A because the A is in the E. How do you think this is going to change it? I have t to the n. I know t to the n gives me this. So what do I expect t to the n times e to the a t to give me? S minus a n plus t. Uh, n plus 1. S minus a on the bottom, n plus 1. And on the top, the n. Let's see. You can also derive some useful properties. For example, let's say I want to take the Laplace transform of a derivative. Then I can plug this into the formula. Now it's y to the n times e to the minus st. And now what I can do is I can actually do integration by parts on this, right? So I can let my u be y to the n du be um, just the derivative of this, which is y to the n minus 1. Right? And I can let my v be e to the minus s t dv dt. And so my v would be, I just integrate this, so it's minus 1 over s e to the minus s t. <laughs> but basically you can use integration by parts and to show find a recursive formula by doing integration by parts. So it would be wrong to do u dv as you did before? Or that's the same thing? No, it's the same thing. I just didn't want to go through it. Uh, 
Um, this is sort of the one I use. So basically, in particular, they usually ask you with like first order, uh, second order differential equations anyway. So I'll just tell you the first few. So for example, from this, we can derive that the Laplace transform of y prime is just minus y of 0 plus s times the Laplace transform of y. And the Laplace transform of y double prime is just minus y what prime of 0 plus s times the Laplace transform of y prime. So at each stage, you can find Laplace transform and keep plugging them in. Right, the Laplace transform of y triple prime would be minus y double prime at 0 plus s times the Laplace transform of y double prime. You get a, like a recursive definition. Also, yeah, uh, closed form. So, plus transform. I always do this one. I never go to the big one because I don't like memorizing big things. So this is s to the n the plus transform y. And everyone else is a minus y to the 0. We will be given y 0, right? Yeah, I, we're going to give you the initial conditions in general. Some people like memorizing this one, I don't. That's the one I sort of remember. I, I remember that one. So this is S. So for a second order, you'd only have like three terms, right? Your n would be three. Your n would be two, which will give you three terms. Um, either of these formulas. those are the forms. Memorize either one you'd like. I don't particularly care. I like doing this one. Uh, you don't particularly have to memorize these because they will give you the tables. But let's just see it in action. Okay. Can we use the flash transform to solve what we easily solved earlier this semester? Yes. The easy ones. The ones that you can, if you're really quick, you can double check your answer by doing it a, a way you know you could before. We're going to use it to solve in this class second order linear differential equations with constant coefficients. So you, you'll know how to solve it another way, so you can even double check your answer if you have time. Um, so example, and we're going to see the difference here. y double prime plus y equals 0, where y is 0 equals 0, y prime is 0. That's the first example. So of course we know how to solve this with undetermined coefficients. It's actually not a bad problem. We know that sine and cosine are going to be the linear independent solutions. And then we're going to plug in this one. OK. All right. So we're going to sort of see the difference between Laplace transforms and solving this regularly. So the idea is we're going to take the Laplace transform of this equation. So we're going to try to transform it. So, 1, equal to plus, times 1, um, equation. Which means, I'm going to say the plus of So take Laplace of both sides. 
How do I get to the Laplace transform of y double prime plus y? Plug in the negative y prime. You can take the Laplace of each one separately, right? How do you know that? Because it ends up being the Laplace transform of sums is the Laplace transform of each. How do you know that? Um, because they're exponentials and they're being added. No, because it's exponential, because it's an integral. You take the integral of a sum, it's just the sum of the integrals, right? So basically, you can take the Laplace transform of a sum by taking the Laplace transform of each part in the sum. Okay. Now we're going to have to figure out what the heck is this. And that's where those forms that I just gave you come in handy, right? So usually we like to use another variable because we don't like writing L of Y all the time. Um, big Y is usually used. So you let the Laplace transform of Y be big Y. Some people don't like using that, but that's what I use. This would mean that the Laplace transform of y prime is going to be what? Well, it's going to be minus y of 0 plus s times the Laplace transform of y. Minus y of 0 is, from here, is just 0, plus s times the Laplace transform of y, which I call big Y. So the Laplace transform of y prime here is just s y. The Laplace transform of y double prime is going to be minus y prime of 0 plus s times the Laplace transform of y prime, which is the guy I found in the previous stage. So Laplace transform of y double prime is going to be minus y prime of 0, which is going to give you minus 1, plus s times the Laplace transform of the previous guy, which is just s y. So this is minus 1 plus s squared y. Which means I can plug this into the differential equation, right? Replace y double prime with this guy. And replace y with the Laplace transform of y. And replace 0 with, what's the Laplace transform of 0? 0. It's 0, right? Because it's 0 over s. OK, so that's going to be the equation. Now notice there are no derivatives here. I just turned a differential equation into a regular equation. All I want to do now is solve for y. Right. How do we solve for y? Take the, Take the one Remove the 1 over, right? Algebra. <laughs> now what? We factor out the common y. Divide. And we divide by this guy. <laughs> okay, so now <laughs> here comes the part where, so I just turned a differential equation into an algebraic equation, solve for y just like you would in any polynomial, right? But now I get the answer, but what is this? This is the Laplace transform of y, which means now I go back to the table and I try to figure out if my Laplace transform looks like this, what was the original function it came from, right? We say we take the inverse Laplace transform, right? What kind of function would give us this? It's a constant over s squared plus a constant. What does this sort of look like? It's a sine, right? This looks like a b over s squared plus b squared, right? Where b equals 1. So this means my actual y is just sine of t. Done. So notice here, our initial conditions were actually built into the problem. So when we get to our answer, we don't have a C1 and a C2 that we have to solve for. It's already built in. We get the straight up solution, the, the particular solution right away. Right? So one of the reasons why engineers like it, you can cut down on the algebra that they have to do. Right? So the, the in, initial conditions are built in at every stage. So when you get to your answer, there are no arbitrary constants to find. That's the answer, right? And you can check this with undetermined coefficients. You get c1 sine t plus c2 cosine t. You differentiate, you plug in these guys, you realize that the c1 is 0 and the c2 is 1. And it will give you this. So that basically illustrates the formula for solving a, little, a differential equation with Laplace transform. Is it conceivable to do the whole exam with just Laplace transform? <laughs> Well, anything like this, yeah, you can literally do all of those. 
Just make sure that the guy on this side, you know how to find the Laplace transform. Right? If it's a polynomial, you'll know. But, or an exponential, or a string function, or anything in the table. Okay, another example, slightly more complicated, but still not that complicated. Y double prime minus Y prime minus 6Y equals 0, where my initial conditions are Y of 0 equals 1, Y prime of 0 equals minus 1. What if it wasn't y of 0? Let's say if it was y of 1. Would I make the equation equal 1? Well, you'd have to sort of do this weird thing where you sort of shift it before, then solve it, then shift it back. We're going to go through that or not? No, we won't need it. They'll always give you at 0. You're nice. In some of your engineering classes, you might have to shift things, though. But you can sort of do it sort of like how I did that thing with the series when I, we centered at x minus 1. I just let z equals x minus yeah. 1. So if we had that, I would have probably introduced another variable, you know, let's say equals t minus whatever that thing number was. Rewrite it in terms of being at t equals zero, solve it, and then shift it back to the other variable. But yeah, you won't get anything more complicated than this. They're gonna give you a second order with constant coefficients. They might have a function over here, they might not. Very usually it's zero, but not always. So you see this and they say, solve this using Laplace transform, which means you can't do the regular thing, because they'll specifically say, use Laplace transform. All right, so for using Laplace transforms, start out the same way. Let Laplace transform of y be y. This means the Laplace transform of y prime is minus y of 0, plus s times Laplace transform of y. y of 0 is 1, minus 1, plus s y. This means the Laplace transform of y double prime is minus y prime of 0, plus s times the Laplace transform of y prime. y prime of 0 is minus 1, so this becomes plus 1. The Laplace transform of y prime is this, so it's minus 1 plus s y. So ultimately this is 1 minus s plus s squared y. And then you just plug this into the differential equation. So replace y double prime with this guy. Replace y prime with this guy. So I get a minus y prime, I'm going to take negative. And replace y with just big Y. So this guy is just minus 6y. Equal the Laplace transform of 0 is just 0. How do we solve this one? Solve for y. It's just an algebraic equation. No, he's scared. <laughs> this one plus one. Yeah, well, you can always factor out the y, right? You're going to have a y times minus s squared minus s minus 6. Here. Uh, this is a plus. Right? Take and the then other side. the other guys I can take to the other side. This is going to be 1 plus 1 is 2. Bring it over. It's a minus 2. Here was a minus s. Bring it over. It's an s. And that's it, right? And divide. Then you divide. Right. Math 190. Yay. <laughs> Math 190. It finally makes sense. So now, <laughs> like we finally get to a part where you know those memes where it's like, where am I going to use this in life? Yeah, yeah, this is... Here. We finally get it, like, Here. five semesters later. Here. I'm talking about the real-world application. Here. Okay. <laughs> Talk about me. This is going to be a real-world application pretty soon. Where do I use this? <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. When you become an engineer. Show me. <laughs> so now the question is, how do I figure out what that is? What function actually gives me this as a Laplace transform? You'd have to rewrite it in one of those forms. You have to sort of write it to look like one of those things. So at this point, there, you have tons of options. All of them easy. We all master them right now. Completing the square right, can be, be applicable. Um, partial fractions comes back. Right? Sometimes you're going to have to use partial fractions to find them, things like that. So it's, the idea is you want to write them to look like the right side of that table that I gave you, and then you can jump back to the left side. 
So basically here, what we always try to do first is try to factor the denominator, right? If it can factor, we factor. If it can factor, we complete the square, right? Um, so can this actually be factored? Yes. yes. S minus 3 S plus 2. S minus 3 S plus 2. S plus 2. Which means partial fractions is what we're going to try to do. Prop, right? So I know I can write this as S minus 3 on the bottom plus S plus 2 on the bottom. And we can do the shortcut. S equals 3 makes this 0. Cover that up. Plug in S equals 3. This gives you 1 over 5, so that's 1 fifth. S equals minus 2 makes this 0. Plug in that, plug in x equals minus 2, minus 4 over minus 5, that's 4 fifths. So now we have 1 fifth times 1 over s minus 3, plus 4 fifths times 1 over s plus 2. Do we know the Laplace transform of this? Right, it's 1 over s minus a. a is 3. So this is just e to the 3t plus 4 fifths e to the 2t. Nope. Oh. E to the negative. Negative, negative 2t. 2t, right? This is, you have to think of it as a minus minus 2, right? right. It has to be in that form minus a. So this is e to the minus 2t. So this is what big Y was. So notice that our C1 and C2 are already solved for. right? They've been built in the whole time from here. So if you did this with undetermined coefficients, you would have done it. You would have factored you know, R squared minus R minus 6. You would get R equals 3 or minus 2. You get E to the 3T to the 2T with C1 and C2. Then you have to differentiate, plug those guys back in, and then you find them. So if we have a non-homogeneous um, equation, we do the same thing except instead of it being equal it, to right. zero. Instead of equal to zero, it would be equal to something else. And then we just still just do You still just thing. do it here. But the guy on this side will, of course, be more complicated. You might have to try something else. So the idea is whatever ends up over here, you have to rewrite it to look like something in your table. And there are many ways you can do it. In this case, partial fractions was what helped me out. Sometimes you have to complete the square and do a partial fraction. It can get ugly. But usually on a final, they don't make it that ugly. So is that going to be like that ugly? I, I told you the final I saw this semester is like one of the easiest ones I've ever seen. So OK, OK. Yep. Can we write the last person like, you know, big block and write something else? Yeah. I mean, I know students who call it big L. Big L. <laughs> sound like a gangster. Yo, big L. <laughs> <laughs> right, but. <laughs> big J, Jehovah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. J Smith. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't believe it. I just th thought of this. Mr. Smith on the movie, you know? Yeah, it's almost the end of the semester. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, damn, I can't wait until I stop seeing this Chinese boy. <laughs> just give him a C and pass. I don't want to see him no more. <laughs> well, you're down to a B minus now. <laughs> and then the plus you're going to be paying. <laughs> and then the cost. <laughs> You know, eventually he might just give you a C minus and then just make you come back. And then just because it's like easier to cut my loss so it'll make your life miserable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just make sure I register for someone else's class. <laughs> you wish. <laughs> Never teach the French of the equations again. Yes. <laughs> I'll make I refuse. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this was this was actually a final part. Alright. Fall eleven, I think it was. <clears throat> The Laplace transform problem. Cool. Um, there was one final where they put a one here, so you know you'd have to write that as one over s, and then just bring things over and combine the fractions. I think that's the meanest I've ever seen it, like with a one. That's true. A lot of people. Okay. So how do we do that one? Do that. Right, so. Let Laplace transform y equals big y. I was going to call it big L. 
Prime. 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 Plus S times L plus S on Y minus Y is Y of zero so plus S times Y. And then this will be minus Y prime of zero plus S times L plus transform of Y prime. Y prime of zero was a minus two, this becomes a plus two plus S times L plus transform of Y prime was found in the previous stage. Minus 2s plus, plus s squared y. y. Yeah. The danger here is thinking your s is a 5. That, that happens to me all the time. So make sure you write your s like an s. I don't know why they use s, but that's the standard variable. So now we just plug this in, right? So we're going to take 2 times this. 4 minus 4s plus 2s squared y plus seven times this plus six times that equals zero. Maybe this is one where I have to complete the story. I don't know. Let's hope one thing only hope. Yes. Yeah. Two s squared plus seven s plus six, oh, okay. and then so that takes care of these three. Bring everyone else over, so I would have four s minus four plus fourteen. Plus ten. So, right, so plus four minus fourteen is minus ten. Bring it over; it's going to be a plus ten. So that takes care of that and that, and that's everybody, right? So then this would be. Now our goal is to write that to look like something on the right side of the table. Um, does it factor? Yes, it It factors? Yes. It's a nice one. Forget it. No, this guy. What does it factor as? 2s plus 3. Yeah, three and four factors. So it's another complete the square problem. In the homework, there are going to be ones where you have to complete the square with. Them. So have fun. <laughs> I did all these examples. <laughs> this is evil. Okay, so now we just you know, yeah. At this point, it gets boring. You just like, uh, you start to fall asleep and do it while you're falling asleep. Mm -hmm. Get 100 on the final. And I give you a B minus because you stuff you say in class. <laughs> Why are you gonna be so rude to me? <laughs> okay, so figure out what makes this zero s equals minus three, three over two. So I cover that up and plug in s equals minus three over two. So it's going to be four times minus three over two plus ten over minus three over two is just a half, right? And then here I'm going to s minus two makes this zero. Plug seven. that in. Plug in s equals minus, minus two. two. That's minus eight uh, plus eight. ten okay. over that's minus one. Minus one. So y is equal to what's this? That's minus six plus ten. Right. So that's four divided by a half. So that's two. So that's eight. So that's 8 over 2s plus 3, right? This would be um, 2 over minus 1, so it's minus 2 over s plus 2. Okay. So what is that? You write this as 8 over 2 times 1 over s plus 3 over 2. Right. 
right? So this is minus s plus t. So this is just 4 e to the minus 3 over 2t two two minus 2 e to the minus 2t. Two two. Sometimes you have to do that, factor out a constant from the bottom. Sometimes you have to multiply top and bottom by a certain constant to make these with things. Yeah, you can do tons of stuff. Yeah, roll to 200 percent. You gotta help me out with this. I just, what? You have to write to look like something. So if you see something like this, a linear function at the bottom, you have to write to look like s minus a. Right? So if your s has a coefficient, you factor out the coefficient. So if I factor a 2 from the bottom, that's the result. And so on and so forth. So like last time I want to introduce something. Do I want to introduce something? The next section was Fourier series. Well, it has to be special. Can you go over like the special stuff five one three? Yeah, I'll take some homework questions. Five point three is not that important for the test, but I can do it if, unless there are any other pressing questions. So for chapter six, this is all we need to know, right? How to find the Laplace transform of a function and how to solve a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients using Laplace transforms. But of course, you can generalize this. You can go to higher order. And things like that. Is that one third or one half? On top of the two s plus three. This? Yeah. This is a one half. Okay. Yeah, because I plug in minus three over two here, plus four over two gives me one over two. Stop there. Any questions on further homework? Five point three is not that important. Um, the series what we did from five point five is also not that important. I'm not going to ask you that because you know, we don't really need to go over it for various reasons. Um, so, but so for the series, you need to really know what's what we covered in five point two. You need to know. Oh, so, let's talk about the test. test. Of course, you need to know higher order. Higher order ODEs. And I'm going to test you on various kinds, where right? you're going to need um, the roots of unity. Make sure you know how to long polynomial long division. Factor in general, factor by grouping, difference of squares, sums, and difference of cubes, all that stuff you should remember. Um, we're going to talk about Euler's equations, how to solve them. All right, remember that's the guy where you assume y equals x to the r and get alpha r times so r minus one plus beta these r. These questions you wouldn't ask me to find terms, right? Like you wouldn't say find the first three or four terms in Euler. No. And I'm going to also ask you to. Identify and classify singular points. All right, so be able to identify a singular point, tell me whether it's regular or irregular. Um, I won't ask you to find a series solution about an irregular point, only ordinary points. Series solutions about ordinary points. That's section 5.2 of 4 points. Yeah, 5 point. What else is there? So a bunch of these, a bunch of Euler's, singular points, series. The bonus I can ask about Laplace transforms and maybe some basic questions on the next topic, which is Fourier series. You thought power series was fun, which 
series. We get to four A series. Why are you trying to make it so hard? You know, like it's not you, hard. It's how you think about it. No, it just makes saying, your life easier. I'm just, I'm just saying, like they went from regular coordinates to polar coordinates. Like, are you freaking serious? It's like I found another way, but it's harder. I was like, what the? No, it's easier in certain situations. And, oh, in certain. If your region is circular, then you won't have like in your limits yet. Radical of 25. I'd rather have that than, than favor. No, it's rather. What? Really? No. Comes like that. Vincent, they're all statistic masters. <laughs> I can um, tell there's one standing in front of us. <laughs> Is there anything I'm missing? So you definitely need to know those. Some of the exams, some of the questions says find all solutions to the differential equations, and they give you a Euler equation. That means you just like factor. yeah, y equals just factor x to the r. You do that thing. You get the initial equation, and you get c one x to the r one or blah blah blah. Depending on if it's complex or yeah, and within this, know what happens if you have distinct real roots or yeah. complex roots or a repeated root. So that's all the solutions. Yeah. That would be all the solutions. All right. So we did higher order, undetermined coefficients with higher order. So make sure you remember how to do undetermined coefficients here with or without undetermined coefficients. So it's either undetermined or um, variation parameters? No, we don't do variation parameters for higher order. Uh -huh. I mean, the homework for that was an extra credit thing. Oh. The, the, all the higher order stuff that you can do with undetermined coefficients. Power series. Yeah, that's that's basically all you have to know for the test. So higher order, right, where you I give you either a homogeneous or a non-homogeneous one, which you'd have to use undetermined coefficients. Know all the various ways to solve one of those. It's, it's right, because you don't have quadratics anymore. You have higher degree polynomials, you need to know how to factor them or find the roots. Euler's equation, those are these guys, and identify a singular point and do a series solution. I can probably give you a bonus. I think it will be good practice to um, redo the Euler with reduction of order. Given one solution. Right, so from here you'll have two solutions. You should be able to find the second one if I just tell you what one is, and you can use the reduction of order to find the second one. So there are actually a couple ways to tackle something like that, which is very typically asked. Um, Five point three, you don't have to worry too much about. So, uh, are there any other questions? Um, so we won't have to do the. Um the series thing with n to the n plus r is the power, you, we don't, I'm so not going to. So you won't ask for the real print solution in your, like, Euler's equation, right? I won't ask for a series solution, no. I will ask for a series solution to the regular ones. Those are the ones where you assume y equals a n x to the n, or technically x minus x naught to the n, from 0 to infinity. The ones where you have to assume something like a n x to the n plus r? No. From zero to infinity? No. Don't worry about that. And we did that in 5.5. Uh, when we have to assume it's from negative infinity to infinity, I have to tell you if a n uh, is less than zero, n is the, I have to if say If n that. is negative, then it's zero? I have no. to say that or no? I could just do it. Don't worry. No quiz? So... It was like three minutes. Don't tap him. So maybe. <laughs> so maybe one problem on this. One, two, three. Maybe I'll put this in one problem, A and B, and then maybe three of those. So it's like 
So it'll be five problems. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, like that, right? <laughs> Possible topics for the bonus problem. How many points for the bonus? For the bonus yeah. system? Yeah. I always get a lot of points. <laughs> Yeah. No. Well, we sort of did some of the singular point stuff in 5.5, if I recall. But no, none of this stuff from 5.5. So the part of 5.5 where we did this, forget it. No serious solution from 5.5. But anything else we did in 5.5 is very good. Any other questions? Yeah, I was going to ask for uh, one of the practice finals. Okay, all right. Afterwards. All right.